Hello and welcome to Woodlawn. Describing this place as simply a cemetery does not do it justice. Established in 1863, Woodlawn is a 400-acre nature oasis in an urban setting with over 6,300 trees representing more than 140 different species. With its deep history, Woodlawn became a national landmark in 2011. It is a non-sectarian cemetery and popular final resting place for over 310,000 individuals from all walks of life, some of whom are quite famous. Woodlawn is distinguished by memorials that represent the largest and finest collection of funerary art in the country. Recognized as one of America's most historically significant properties, more than 100,000 visitors from around the world come here each year searching for the final resting places of many historic figures, including artists and writers, civic leaders, entrepreneurs, great entertainers, and jazz musicians. George M. Cohan and his family, the four Cohans in their last resting place here in Woodlawn Cemetery. George was born into a life of performance with the four Cohans, his dad Jeremiah, known as Jerry, his mom Nellie, his older sister Josie, and George. They were hardworking folks on the road, and the vaudeville and showbiz life of the 1890s was not easy. Think about six shows a day, six days a week, rehearsals on Sunday, and then add to that a week here, a week there, a week there. Tough business. George was born into it though, and that was his education, was show business. He first appeared in a show as a prop, as a baby, of course. But he soon took on second violin in the orchestra, but he didn't like practicing scales. He only liked to do what he wanted, which was get in there and see what every job was doing, what every person was doing on the show and learn all about it. And soon George learned how it all worked and he started to add his own creativity by writing skits for the family. Also by starting to write songs. And George is taking control of the family business as an early teenager. As a matter of fact, when he's 15, he declares to the family, we should go to New York. And they're saying, well, we're not really sure. He's like, well, I'm going. They're like, all right, we'll go because they didn't want to let him go on his own at 15. But at 15, he, he pretty much becomes the manager of the family, gets them to New York. They start working hard, and George has got ambition. He's singing, he's dancing, he's writing material for others. He starts to produce his own shows. He starts to write iconic songs that you know. Give my regards to Broadway. Over there, you're a grand old flag. These are songs that are introducing the idea of patriotism and nationalism into Broadway. George is taking this old model of these hoity-toity theater concepts and kicking them to the curb. He's bringing in American vernacular of pals and gals and the ideas of being an American. George is introducing this idea and people are loving it. He's rewriting the way dance is used in shows. Dance might have been before a way for just to do something in between, but he's using the song and dance as a vehicle to carry the show. And George continues being more and more successful and just carrying on with his co-producer, Sam Harris, who's actually right here next door. And together they're really a powerhouse Broadway team producing some of the most successful and theater changing shows more than a hundred years ago. Uh, no wonder George became known as the man who invented Broadway. And if you think about it, of all the great talent that have been through New York, of all the great actors that have appeared on the stage, there's only one actor who has a statue on Broadway, and that's George M. Cohan. He was a prolific producer, writer, singer, dancer, but he didn't record too much except for some sessions that he did in 1911 at the Victor Recording Studios. It's almost as if George is speaking to us from his mausoleum with the beautiful Tiffany windows 
Life's a very funny proposition after all. Here is George M. Cohan. Oh. 